came about because about five or six years ago when we started building these sorts of services, we were looking for people with the same use case, particularly in the RE space, so our fellow sister research networks. And a number of them were indeed active in this space, but typically what they were doing was they were building a single node, a single box to host all the storage, all the software, all the smarts, all the nows in. And that tended to be enough simply because these are geographically small countries. That works for them. We, on the other hand, realized almost immediately that we were going to have to have at least two boxes, one in the west, one in the east. And when you want to synchronize data across those sorts of latencies, across those sorts of data speeds, we were thinking at least designed for 10 gigabits per second. You're going to have to have an underlying, call it a file system, call it an object store, that is able to cope with that sort of latency um, replication requirement. And none of the other peers seem to be particularly worried about that, apart from CERN, who of course run the LHC network, the LHC1, which spans across the globe, essentially, and does 10 gigabits per second. So they too were tinkering with this particular use case. So when the first workshops about synchronization services, synchronization and sharing services, were held, um, we sort of hit it off with each other. We, we, we figured out that we were catering towards the same requirement. And in fairness, they were further ahead than we were. They had built most of the storage system underneath. They call it EOS. And they started more or less, well, selling it to us isn't the right word because it's all you know, friendship and freedom. Um, but convincing us that this was a good technology. So slowly, slowly, we started working together with them, um, adapting to their notions of how this entire thing ought to work. It was a bit of a, a rethink. And in the end, we ended up running it ourselves. Um, to a level of, apparently, to a level of excellence, I mean, I don't want a chest beat, but that the CERN people started to get interesting, interested in what we were building. So in the end, we started doing global scale replication demo, demos where they did the replication from CERN to Taiwan. We did the replication from Taiwan to Sydney and the entire system ticked over. I dare say that between CERN and ourselves, we're probably the only ones doing this at this scale, at this proper global scale at these sorts of speeds right now. There's data replication happens at these speeds, but that's not file systems or object stores. That's just purely point to point. You push something from here to there, and then it's no longer here, but it is there. That's an entirely different mode is from proper replication where you have to ensure that stuff that is here is also there and is copied on an ad hoc basis and is consistent. That's hard. Very few people run this sort of stuff, and particularly not across administrative domains. If you're within, say, one company, then it becomes somewhat easier to ascertain that both ends of the deal um, abide by the same rules. But if it's across administrative domains, us talking to the Academia Sinica over in Taiwan, who then in turn talk to the CERN Institute over in Geneva, three different academic domains, and the three of them have to replicate consistently, that's not, a, not an easy problem. And I do believe that we've proven that this can be solved.